Well, hey guys, welcome back to Waters Family Homestead. Well, if you can't tell, I've got a sprinkler going. So I'm watering the chicken run area, which helps dissolve their poo and stuff and get it into the ground. But these trees back here have not been watered in, I don't know, a long time since way before I got it cleared. So thought I'd turn it on and see how far I could get out of it if I put the sprinkler in the corner right there. And I'm getting all the fruit trees and blueberry bushes and stuff watered except for these last three. And it's just about hitting these two over here. It's not getting that last nectarine or peach, whichever it is over there. But the ground's getting wet within a foot of the base over here. So hopefully that'll help the fruit trees a little bit. I've still got some figs on the big fig tree that haven't turned ripe yet, and I was kind of looking forward to that. So watering them can't help. I mean, can't hurt is what I'm thinking. Whether it's going to actually <laughs> help me or not, I don't know. It's kind of late in the season. But I don't know how well y'all could hear, but I believe they're flying those kited airplane things again. I've had quite a few last few days I've heard I haven't bothered to track them down and they're not flying over the house like they used to so but as soon as this next sprinkler run goes by I'm gonna start heading back to the other tree and whoop it got me <laughs> oh my goodness so it's not doing bad this, this apple tree and the fig tree and all is at least getting water now, so. And I'm not gonna leave it on for long. I just wanna get the ground wet again. But I got on a tractor for a little while. And I know in the last video, it looks like pretty much what you've seen now. But I did make a little bit more progress. I pushed that big cedar limb that was covering up this corner right here back over the line and broke the the uh, privy tree or bush that was hanging over this side back over onto that side. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit past the well. Now, if y'all don't know, I built this well house four by eight for a reason. It's divided in the middle and I put a light in the well side in the cold part of the winter to keep my well warm and I put a vent in the top of the wall that separates the two halves inside so that my dog that used to stay in there would have heat from that light as well and uh, kind of keep his dog house side, you know, a little warm for him anyway. But I'm standing here right at the edge of this cedar tree limb that I, I can't move with the backhoe. It's way too big. I'm just going to play with it and that ain't going to help. So from here... Let me back up a little more so y'all can see. See, I'm right here at the edge of the cedar. All the way back. Now, I know there's been quite a few videos me showing y'all the progress that I was making and what I was doing, but this is as good a shot as you get right here. I even took the little garden rake there and raked around the edge of the chicken wire, the chicken run wire there, and then brought the lawnmower in and knock that down and a few other things so put it back up and then I got on the tractor and did a little more of the this mess and that old fence was broken in several places so I'm not worried about saving that fence it you know I'm running a new fence right on this side of that one anyway so it'll be all right I'm just gonna drive in new t-posts and run new t-posts and and fence all the way down as far as I you know can anyway with the 400 feet of wire I've got so we'll see how it works out but I am planning on tearing down this pump house as far as taking this doghouse side off of it um, making it just a pump house just for the well and get rid of the extra part of the structure but that's a project for another day you see I've got the one pole up here we brought up and realized okay it's gonna be in the way it's too much so we drug the rest of them down to the other end. 
But all I need to do really is take the bucket and do some more scraping or the box blade and kind of clean up the edges around. You can see where that fence post was right there. It's really hard for y'all to see on camera though. And this privy that's growing up on the other side of the fence, but the root ball's over on this side. There's the old T-post, why it's there. I think they put the bob wire across the top. I don't know. The only thing that was, wasn't was broken was the bob wire. But uh, I just pushed through all that with the tractor to help get me, you know, help it get cleaned up a little bit. That privy tree is way over on the other side, 15 or 20 feet on the other side of the property line, the one that's hanging over. So I'm just going to end up cutting it off and throwing the branches back over the fence. But... That's not too much work, but I'm pleased with it. The chickens and the turkeys seem to be excited. They've been walking this side of the fence a lot since I've opened it up some. And, you know, I, I'm gonna record one day with me driving up from work and show y'all as soon as my truck gets in front of my property where I can see the chicken run, those, every chicken and turkey in here comes running whether they're at the other end of the chicken run or not, but they all come running up here to this corner. Just like the dogs when you get home, they greet you. Every one of these chickens and turkeys greet me when I drive up. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to record that for y'all one day. But anywho, I'm gonna get off here. I just wanna do a quick video with uh, showing you the progress and I'm actually able to water these trees now so maybe I'll get a little better chance of fruit next year I'm, I'm about to the point that apple trees require too many b frost nights below freezing nights or hours a year to grow in my area I've actually got this one and I've got one at the other end is the apple tree and I've got two on the other side of the property and none of them have ever produced an apple. Now, the smallest one up there, the very first year after I planted it, yeah, I had one little bitty apple and it rotted. <laughs> but for the most part, I don't think I'm ever going to get apples. This apple tree here is about eight years old, seven or eight years old. And it should be producing apples by now, and it's not. I did have some a few blooms, maybe half a dozen blooms on it this year, but I didn't get any apples. So if I don't get something next year, I'm probably going to take these trees down if the goats don't kill it anyway. And uh, I'm, I'm planning on replanting some figs outside of this part of the goat area. Um, because I don't know if they're going to kill it or not, but I do enjoy the figs when, when I've gotten them. I've only gotten one off mine, but that's the idea. I don't want, you know, the, the goats to kill them, and they, they might. So if they do, they do, and I'll just replant elsewhere on the property. But for right now, it's going to stay the way it is. So I haven't went and checked my deer feeders lately. I know it's time to fill them up. The deer did find the corn and all I put out, and and they they tore it up in about three days from the time they found it until those feeders were empty. So I've got to go buy some deer corn, hopefully this week, and bring some home and put back there because I actually want to do some hunting this year if I get a chance, and I don't normally hunt, but I actually, I'm planning on it, but we'll see how these projects go, this goat pen and everything else. Um, you know, it's going to, going to come first because I want to finish this thing. But for those of you that's been watching a while, let me zoom in a little bit. Y'all know I cut those pear trees completely back. I mean, almost every limb off. I, they had fire blight in them and I didn't want the whole tree to die. So I cut them back like thinking I'm just probably going to kill the tree. But look how much greenery has come back in those two pear trees in just half a year of me pruning it back so they might actually make it which would be a good thing so i'm gonna walk around the front side so i don't get wet again that's not my favorite thing of getting wet but i gotta get with my brother he's got a a hole digger that fits on the three-point hitch of the tractor 
and either bring his tractor out here or bar it and put it on mine so I can get these holes dug for the goat shelter on the back side here of the chicken run or the chicken pens and hopefully drill the holes where I want my post to go so I don't have to dig them by hand because this ground, whoo, I'll tell you what, if you ain't a big boy, it'll sure make you a big boy. <laughs> but um, anywho, I need to at least try to get where I know things are going to go. I want a gate right here. At the end of the chicken run, I want a gate here. So that's two post holes. And then another big post hole over here on the end. And I'm probably going to do the H post. So one sideways and then another one so that I can pull against that all the way down and then put another wood post at the other end. The T post would be all in between that. So every corner is going to get at least one post, if not an H post. And that's going to take a little more than I anticipated, but it'll, it'll work out in the end. I don't want to have to have problems keeping the goats in there. So anyway, I've talked longer than I planned on it, guys. I do appreciate y'all watching the videos. All the new subscribers, thank you very much. It really helps tremendously i you know i've been doing this for i think just a little over two years and you know i've got 330 something videos and that not including the ones i've deleted off of youtube because of censorship you know that's another 15 or 20 that were firearms related it is what it is um there's not another platform that i've found that will give you the the public you know people watching it compared to youtube anywhere and i'm i'm on rumble y'all y'all see that in the about me section but you know i got 19 followers on rumble and i've got 400 and plus something on youtube and uh <laughs> that's that's a huge difference y'all so just don't get the views over there that i do on youtube so i'm, I'm gonna stick with it and play by their rules even though they're made up in their rule section it doesn't say anything about the gun content but you know it is what it is so all us small channels really do appreciate y'all watching the videos and hitting the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and you know if you if if you really like what me and other small channels like one day at a farm cnc farm um heartland hq with dink and tank um, oh, good lord I, I know i've named those three before and there's quite a few others find the small channels guys that do what you enjoy watching and you want to learn about and subscribe to those channels because it is so hard to build your channel up to where you want it to be and uh, we got a long ways to go but i do appreciate each and every one of y'all y'all remember what i always tell you jesus loves you and so do i y'all be safe be prepared <laughs>